tradition of always only starting five minutes late, we'll get started. Uh, welcome uh, to you all. Uh, I must say, and I, I somewhat apologize for how crowded it is, but I think it's simply a reflection of the great interest of this subject. We do various events, and this is one that's kind of an overflowing room for, for all the reasons all, all that we all know. I think uh, it's always interesting the, the genesis of a meeting like this. There was uh, Matos Filio Amadeo, one of our directors, uh, talking about and talking about the content, what's interesting. And clearly, now that we've gone uh, fiscal reform, on to the next big battle, uh, tax reform. Uh, Interestingly, I remember many years I've been, my name is Ted Helms, I'm the executive director of the chamber. I've been involved with the chamber uh, as a director and a president. I was with Petrobras for many years. And I remember once going to a tax reform event, and I remember what I learned from it is that there's an awful lot of smart Brazilians who spend a lot of time thinking about something that's way more complicated than it should be. So uh, that, was, that's I, that was my, my, my takeaway from that, and I do hope that uh, uh, with this tax reform at the end, uh, we'll do that. I've also asked that they're going into great detail. You have to always be careful when you have uh, tax accountants and lawyers talking about tax that they go into the weeds. I said, no, no, no. We're going to have a, a broad discussion, make sure we understand the issue so that we can all follow it uh, going forward. Uh, quick, so, uh, quick point, uh, we do do different types of events. Uh, uh, this event, and just to, one thing we're doing very interesting, we have these uh, workshops on training. We're starting this, uh, trying to move it forward. I actually have Daniela Delago, well known in Brazil. Where's Daniela? I'm going to your hand. So uh, check our websites, talk to us. Uh, if you have interest in going, it's going to be this week and next on things like motivation, leadership, etc. all very interesting. Uh, final point, uh, Rafael Vianella from uh, uh, Bene uh, could not make it, although he is an ex-PWC guy, and so we've got, I think everybody here has a their, their roots, their genesis in PWC, so I'm sure they can cover for him. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Glaucia and let her make all the introductions that go from there. Thank you, Glaucia. Yes. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here in the Brazilian American Chamber to discuss tax. First of all, it's important to say that taxation, tax in general, uh, are a hot topic in Brazil nowadays. Incredible, but it is. So our intention right now is to try to address some topics, some issues regarding the formal tax reform and other issues regarding the corporate taxation. We have many changes. We will have many changes about taxation. So I think that here we have experts in the matter. I start with my, my partner, Luis Felipe Ferraz, uh, partnered with me in Matos Filho, uh, an expert in corporate ta taxation. Uh, we have uh, Ana Malvestio, partner at uh, PwC, expert as well. And we will have uh, Hisher Peck uh, from XP Investimentos, who will try to address the political issues regarding the tax reform, and I, I believe that in, uh, in, uh, in other topics as well. Uh, well, our intention here is to uh, try to present the main points about the tax reform and the changes regarding the taxation in general. Uh, our intention is also to have uh, an open discussion. It's very important, it's very interesting. If we have questions from the audience, we, we, will, we will be available to, to, to try to answer everything. So we will start uh, with short presentations from our speakers, and after this, we will open to the discuss to the audience. Okay, Felipe, please, could you start? Yes, Alan. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, yeah, working. Thank you, Klaus, for the introduction. It's a really pleasure. And congratulations for this opportunity to share this panel with you. It's really amazing opportunity. Thank you all to be here today. And I'd like also to congratulate Ted for organizing. You and your team are always amazing. Congratulations. And as Klaus has said, we are not here to predict the future. <laughs> it's impossible. And if it would be possible, probably we are predicting different things, not about tax reform, right? <laughs> but we are here, and our main goal is when you leave this room this afternoon, you would be able to think about 
what's going on in Brazil, and what, as an investor or as a people that works with Brazil, you should be aware and maybe have the opportunity to plan something in advance of the tax reforms happened. So this is our main goal. So our discussion is going to focus what's going on and what it's important for you to pay attention. This is what we would like. To start, it's important to, to share that this is the wonderful day for this discussion because we, we should celebrate since we had yesterday the approval of the social security reform. This is a wonderful achievement. And uh, we needed to consider that this government, they start in January this year, and they could approve the Social Security yesterday. It's a big achievement. And perfect time to move forward. Especially because we need to address... Please, would you mind to show the next slide? This is what needed to be addressed. The social security reform, it's the main point. And why is the main point? Please, the second slide. And don't be afraid, you can go through all of it. Don't be afraid, I'm not going to present all these numbers, and even though they are very small. But my main goal is to show why this government that set as a core priority agenda to address the fiscal imbalance, they start with the social security. In the bottom of the slide, please, you can see. Oh, it's not, yes. In all levels, almost 50% of everything that was collected goes to pay social security. This is why is so needed to have this social security approved. And the same I will show in next slides happen in state level and municipal level too. The same situation. But before I move to the other levels, I'd like to show why this tax reform is so needed. I, I bring some inputs and we together can conclude the same. First of all, too many taxes. We have more than 50. They say that 63 taxes is too many. You can see in this slide, the pink ones is the income tax. And why we have four instead of one? <laughs> Social contribution on net income and income tax both together lead to 35% income tax rate. And why we have two? And we can see in yellow payroll tax. And let me ask you one thing. Does it make any sense for a country like Brazil with an employment rate of 13% to have a taxation as this amount? Make any sense for you? <laughs> Definitely not. So this is why the government have they said many times in news they need to address the taxation on payroll. Another important point is in red we have the consumption taxes. And I'm sure all of you have heard about Pisco things. <laughs> Another two taxes with same calculation basis. Why? Another aspect we do not have clear legislation. And it's very common in PwC, people call me and they ask me questions, and they expect yes or no answers. And all the time, I, they, I cannot deliver yes or no. Because in Brazil, we do not have clear rules. It's hard to interpret it. So this is why this government also has been announcing they would address and they would like to simplify our tax system. This is really important. Uh, I'd like to ask you to move uh, and go to all the slides. No, oh, sorry. Yes, in this level, is the state level, 
43% of everything that's collected by states goes to pay social security children. So it's clear why this is so, and everybody wants this social security reform. And yes, 53, yes, 53%. And ISMS is a consumption tax, the most relevant one in state level. Moving to municipal level, we have uh, ISS, another consumption tax, as the most important one. And again, another aspect that drives a lot of controversy in Brazil. ICMS and ISS, <laughs> most of the time, it's hard to define when I should pay one and where, when I should pay other, especially with a new tech environment. <laughs> right, Mr. Lip? It's really one of the top points of discussion in Brazil. And another important point. When you look to state level, we have 27 states preparing their own legislation about ICMS. They have their own benefits, their own incentives. When you go to municipalities level, uh, I think it's 5,543 municipalities <laughs> having their own legislation for ISS. This drives a lot of complexity. So no, no doubt this tax reform is so needed. But there is more. In the next slide, I can show you how high is our, our tax burden. In Brazil, it's 32.3%, far away of every other BRIC countries. Just is <coughs> small than France. But I think all of you know that the, what a people pay, the taxpayers in France have in return, is completely different if you compare what the people in Brazil have in return, right? We have to pay for education, we have to pay for healthy, and so on. Continuing, please. As I have mentioned about the consumption tax, you can see here almost 50% of what is collected comes from consumption tax. That is not a fair tax. The other countries, they focus completely different, like United States, the same amount, and they focus on income tax instead of consumption tax. The same Canada, exactly the same. So Brazil is in the opposite. It's not a fair system that also needed to be addressed to this tax reform. Moving on, this is very famous. And uh, the world have been moving. OECD countries, they have uh, decreasing their income tax rates. And this is not happening in Brazil and this needs to be addressed. Otherwise, we cannot be competitive enough to attract investment. You have heard about the ambitious privatization program that Brazil has nowadays. How we would attract investment with 34% income tax rate? Definitely, it's something that needs to be changed. Moving on. The famous bureaucracy of our tax system that drives a lot of costs on compliance. Have you heard about SPED in Brazil? Now, SPED is our bookkeeping. Everything is made e-recording. You use technology to do. But it drives a lot of costs. IT costs and human resources costs. And this is an aspect that we will need to think about this tax reform because as you are going to see, Matus Filho is going to address, 
there is, they are thinking about a transitional period. How it's going to be, especially related to costs? How can I deal with the old system and the new system? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is my study. I bring it to, to show to you. It's, it's called Pain Tax. It's made by World Bank and PwC. And it shows 1,958 hours needed for a mid-company size to prepare, fill, and pay taxes in Brazil. Huge difference compared with the other countries, as you can see in those slides, in this slide. It's amazing difference. So we can now, I think we have most of the scenario where we are in Brazil, why we need this tax reform. And if you can change, I will just start saying to you, we have, since we are in Brazil and nothing is simple, <laughs> instead of have just one bill, we have almost four constitutional uh, amendment bills proposed. And, but uh, I would say just two, and uh, Luis Felipe is going to better address this, but just two are the most important ones. Uh, the, it's called in Brazil PEC. PEC 45, it's running in Chamber of Deputies, and it's really, in my opinion, we can discuss this, I think the most uh, interesting one that maybe it's going to lead the consensus, the political consensus. I'd like also to listen to Richard later on about this. We also have, besides the PAC 45, the PAC 110 that is running in Senate. One is proposed by Balea Rossi and Bernard Api, and the second is uh, proposed by the Via Columbri, and uh, Hauli, José Carlos Hauli. Hauli and Api, they are both trying to implement a tax reform, I would say in the last 30 years, Glaucia, oh. probably. probably. <laughs> at least 20 years. At least, at least. Before I move the mic to this Philippe that is going to better address, I'm not going to, to detail these facts, I just would like to start saying that I'm very optimistic because I've never seen a maturity enough to move forward with a tax reform like we are having this time. We have the two houses, we have the government, you have the states, the municipalities, all they agree <coughs> we need a tax reform. And since we could approve yesterday the social security reform that in my opinion, it's really hard one. It was really hard one. I'm very confident we can move forward with our tax reform. I will stop now, and then we come back to discuss the, the main changes. Uh, uh, before to give the word to Felipe, I would like to enjoy your experience to ask you something about the corporate taxation. Uh, I think that uh, everybody knows that our president mentioned in the past the intention to reduce the rate of the income tax. And many people believe that it would be, how can I say, uh, uh, something to be in, uh, applied if uh, the government decides to uh, re-tax the dividends. Mm -hmm. What do you think? How feasible it is? You believe that there is a possibility to reduce the rate of the income tax in Brazil and to have the taxation of dividends? Of course that we will go into the projects, mm -hmm. we will go to the formal tax reform, but before this I would like to ask you about this specific point. Thank you for this question that you allow me to give an important point that should be considered in our discussion. What it's important to take in mind, this tax reform should be neutral from economic point of view. There is no space for increase the taxation, the tax burden, 
and there is no space to reduce. So, considering that nowadays 34% of income tax rate is completely out of market, I have no doubt that we are going to change. I, I had the opportunity to listen the Minister Paul Guedes when they were in Chispe Investment uh, event, I think in the beginning of the year, and he, he addressed this, and I really agree with him. We need to, to reduce the, the, the income tax rate. And for sure, I believe we are going to have the dividends taxation. Why? Because this is completely aligned with OECD countries. All OECD countries, they tax dividends. Only Brazil don't. So, doesn't make sense. And Brazil, and maybe you are going to address this point, Brazil is moving to OCDE model because uh, we used to have in Brazil what we call jabuticaba. Jabuticaba is a, a fruit, a black one, that has only in Brazil. And our tax system is like jabuticaba, just in Brazil. <laughs> Transfer pricing rules and other aspects, only in Brazil we have like this. Okay, thank you. Well, now we need to, to know about the projects. Yeah, we need another Yes, setup. exactly. Felipe, please. Yeah, tax reform in Brazil, again, is the talk of the town, of course. And But tax reform is any type of amendment that you have to the ordinary legislation in Brazil. In, in a way, it's a reform to that legislation. So we have many things going on, and one of them is dividend taxation, another one is OECD with the pricing, we can cover this later. <coughs> another one is a tax transaction that we have uh, recently approved, and things like that. But if you Google ta uh, uh, tax reform in Brazil, everything that will show is VAT. That's the that's the discussion. So uh, this is the subject that we're going to cover here, and then we can cover some other things later. As Anna said, this is the discussion here because uh, it's the, the, the social security reform is over, so now the, let's say the table is clean for us to discuss this. From a political perspective, Beck is going to, to say something later, but I guess the government uh, will address two things at this point. The administrative tax reform and the tax reform at this point. We don't know what is going to prevail uh, 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 because policy and politics, they, sometimes they don't walk together. But let's talk about policy before we talk about politics. As for the tax reform, we can change it. This is basically what Anna said with respect to the division of, uh, of, uh, of the tax system in Brazil. Uh, um, these are not uh, basically taxable events, but what happens here is, if all the reforms or all the amendments that we may have in the, uh, in, in the market, they are very much to be provided by ordinary legislation. And when I say ordinary legislation, is the one that would tax dividends, that would tax transfer pricing, all these things. But when it comes to creating a tax in Brazil, not just amending an existing tax, when it comes to creating a tax in Brazil, you need a, a, a constitutional reform. Constitutional reform is provided by PACs, as Anna said. The PAC is a proposal, uh, a bill of amendment uh, to the Constitution. And why is that? <laughs> if we want to create a new tax, a value-added tax, to unify all the taxes that here we want, we would need uh, an, an amendment to the Constitution. And what does that mean? You need a qualified uh, number of uh, voters in the Congress to approve that. It's not just a simple uh, a number of uh, uh, voters. Uh, you need to have uh, uh, a higher degree of uh, negotiation because that would involve cities, it would involve states, it would involve the federal government. So that's why it's really harder for us to talk about the federal uh, tax uh, uh, system. The problem here is this this type of uh, uh, mess that we, we have in, in, in nowadays. If we were, let's say, in a normal situation, what would happen is the government would have a proposal, a bill, uh, to amend the constitution and the government would address this bill to the Congress. This is what we would have, normal, normal, uh, 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 normal case. In Brazil, we do have three uh, routes uh, at this point. Let's start with this one. This one has been around for a while. 
what we call it back 45, which is again amendment to proposal of amendment to the constitution number 45. It says that it, it, it's it's been sponsored by the House of Representatives. Rudy Maia, who's the president of the House of Representatives, he's been sponsoring this with the with the uh, uh, people's representatives there. So it's uh, this is the one that has been uh, more discussed. It's more advanced in the path to approval. Um, and uh, it has been approved by one of the commissions of the, uh, the, the chamber of the uh, House of Representatives and it's been reviewed by another one. So this is the one that we have, uh, let's say, more advanced discussions. But then that's the House of Representatives. The Senate said, well, I want to take, I want to play a role in this case also. What happens is I will propose my, my, my bill also. So we do have 110. So 110 is uh, it was proposed later, it, it's still running, it's running the Senate, and of course it's going to be remitted to the House of Representatives for uh, appreciation. And of course this one is going to be remitted to the Senate for appreciation. So we might have like a conflict there at a certain point, but this is it. And we have a third one with, which is 128. 128 is the proposal of the government itself. So the government said, okay, finally, I need to have a, 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 a to play a role in this case, and I will send uh, something also. They sent one. It was uh, uh, now in August that they sent that. So it's again, uh, will be subject to, to approval, to review, and all these things. So what happens is, they, all, they are all different per se, but they are very similar with respect to the concepts. If you think and if you read, you see that they all address VATs. So they all have this, the idea of simplifying the system, as I said, uh, to, uh, arguably to eliminate compliance, and, uh, and uh, that's the, let's say, the, the, the best idea that is possible. But they have different, uh, different profiles, they different, have, they have different origins. This one, for instance, the, it calls a, 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 for a, a federal tax, which would arguably eliminate uh, five taxes. And when I say taxes here, we include uh, importable federal taxes, which is piece of things in IPI. We have, uh, in orange, state tax, and in gray, the municipal taxes. So the idea would be to unify all these taxes as one, ha one single uh, federal tax that uh, would have a single rate. Well, of course it's great, it's, uh, it's important, it's good, it tends to, to, to simplify things, it tends to eliminate compliance, but of course real life is different than what we have on paper. It's all about collection. When you have states and you have cities, and again more than 55,000 cities in Brazil, you have to negotiate with many, many people. Uh, Cities with the, with the ISS, and this is the, the let's say, most relevant tax collector in, 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 in the cities, you, they lose power with that. Of course, they lose cash, they lose power, and they lose the ability of granting benefits, and they, in, arguably, they lose the benefit, the, the, the ability to attract uh, uh, business and, uh, to, their, to, to their places. Same with the states. States in Brazil, they really uh, attract investments with benefits. And, of course, they lose the ability to do that. And, of course, federal government. Federal government, is, it's easier because it's the federal government itself that is providing all these amendments. So, the problem here is power and negotiation and ability to attract investments. If we have a VAT like this uh, uh, at the federal level, it means that we would have three rates combined in one. It's, it means that federal level would have, uh, let's say, a VAT rate State will have another VAT rate, and the states will define what the rate will be, uh, H1. And the cities will have another rate. If you combine them, you have a one rate to collect the tax. Should be simple, and of course, it depends on each city. But the thing is, there is a very important discussion as to constitutionality here, because uh, the states and cities would tend to lose their uh, autonomy here. So uh, the state, the, 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 the federal government itself would collect all the tax, the, the, the cash, and would pass it on to states and would pass them on to, to the cities. So uh, the taxpayer would see itself in a better situation 
let's say better, because it would collect just one tax. But of course, the transfer of the cash again back to the states and to the cities will be something provided by the government itself. And of course, there will be so much negotiation and discussion as to how we would the cities and states would receive that when and uh, the, the cash distribution itself. So autonomy will be something very important to discuss. And autonomy is uh, uh, a clause that is in the constitution to that it couldn't be changed. So. Anything here would face constitutional discussions. By the way, in many cases, all there all are two. We do have also, uh, uh, they call it a, a federal selective tax, with respect to some, some types of uh, taxable events or some types of activities that the government itself would like to discourage. So they would call it separate. And so would there be more like cigarettes and, and, and uh, beverage, uh, alcohol, things like that. In parallel, we have the, uh, this pact with the Senate, which again, VAT. There will be one single VAT. They would have, in, in this case, they would have one single VAT, but they would eliminate, instead of five, they would eliminate nine taxes. It's more aggressive, it's more, uh, it, it aims at simplifying even more, but here we have even more problems because if we do have different profiles here, taxes with many different profiles, you can imagine when you put together nine taxes. You have to eliminate more profiles, more different taxable events, more challenges for us to replace the tax or the tax uh, uh, in, in this case. So here it's much more challenging in that respect. But still the concept remains. We have one single uh, federal VAT. And we do have, in this case here, they will have some federal, the, the proposal says that we will have a federal VAT specific for, for some uh, effects, some activities here that they call the, like fuel, oil, and, te and telecommunication. So this is one thing that, again, is the proposal. It's more aggressive also to the extent that it goes beyond the VAT. It goes beyond, but this is a simple one. It unifies the corporate tax and the, what we call the social security tax. Social security tax here is basically a corporate tax. It's it's a different type of uh, tax in Brazil, and the only thing that we have to think to to, to have in mind here is that we usually say 34% for corporate tax, combining both rates. It, it, it's because for the taxpayer it's just the same thing basically, but it would eliminate some some hidden discussions also, and also they create two minor changes here with uh, transferring the uh, the. ITCMD and uh, let's say vehicle tax uh, to uh, uh, some other areas. The, the other one, 128, which is the government, could tend to be more realistic to one extent that it creates two VAT levels instead of this one, instead of two, this one. That one creates two VAT levels. And why is that more realistic? Because the government said, I know, it's very hard to discuss these taxes or combine one tax and have the states and cities lose the power. I know that it will be a problem and then we might be here forever around the table to, uh, to discuss a tax reform. So in this case, they might just say, okay, let's create a federal VT and then let's create, they, they call it dual tax, a federal VT and a separate tax, uh, uh, state slash uh, a city tax uh, unifying them with respect to another VT. And then in the future, they might change and say, well, okay, let's unify this one. The culture has changed and when the culture and when the problems will, will be uh, uh, superseded. So there will be a, a, a new discussion there. They create what we call uh, the IMF. IMF will be the so damned CPMF, the old one that people don't like, but I don't know if it's going to go forward in this case. So we don't even have to cover this point at least. And um, one thing that they cover, and that, that, that's very interesting, they create, they, they, they bring uh, to the uh, back level the discussion on dividends, which shouldn't exist at this point. That's a consideration for the VAT. They say, okay, let's, let's create a, a dividend with a tax, I think they put 4%. And, and this is it, that's a, a, a consideration for the creation of the new taxes. Uh, thing is, dividends, they shouldn't be treated by uh, an amendment to the Constitution. Dividend is, taxation of dividends is income tax. Income tax is a, it's a tax already described in the Constitution. The Constitution only aims at describing the tax and attributing responsibility for collection. This is it. Anything other than that, which is the basis and the rate, should be uh, uh, discussed by 
regular and normal legislation. So why is it there at the Constitution? I don't know. But it shouldn't remain there. It shouldn't be approved in, 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 at that level. And they create another tax and um, another burden here for digital service and financial service. That's a proposal of the government. They create that on a separate basis. Distribution would follow a separate basis also, but that will be, let's say, that's, they'll be treated separately. Of course, they have discussions, and the thing that you might be thinking is, how come we do have three amendments to the tax, to the Constitution, or uh, uh, providing for the same type of tax? That's a question, really, and I understand that it's, of course, it's all about, in, in, in a way, it's about vanity and negotiation, but in the end, we will have, we will have to end up with one single amendment to the Constitution. I don't know which one is going to prevail, but this one will be will have to be uh, uh, negotiated because if you have the government bringing that idea and you have the Senate bringing this idea, and House of Representatives bring, bringing that idea, of course, at a certain point, we'll have a shock. And of course, some things will have to be conceded uh, and we'll have to have a, 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 maybe a different profile here. Uh, what we know is that it's a change of culture. Changing the culture is not very easy because we've been born with that, we've been living with that forever. And here, for instance, they, they claim for a 10-year transition. 10-year transition means that they would reduce the taxes, the current taxes, they would reduce over the years, the rates, they would reduce over the years, uh, over 10 years, and at the same time, the very first year, let's say, let's approve this year, which is not the case, in 10 years, we would reduce the rates, and then next year, for instance, they would have the VAT. So we will have not only this case, this tax existing, but the, the new one. One reducing and the other one uh, increasing. So for 10 years, we would still have a burden, and I'm talking about not a burden, I'm not only talking about a cash burden, I'm talking about a compliance burden, because we keep all the compliance that we, we currently have, because we, we're reducing taxes, but they still exist, but we have another one. So yes, we might have an issue that we would go up to, to go down in the future. In favor, that happens. So you don't turn the key just to, uh, uh, to create a new tax and change a whole culture in that, in that case. And of course, this is again only amendment to the Constitution. After this is gone, it is, let's say, approved, we still have all the challenges because, as I said, the Constitution just lists the, 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 the taxes and attributes the ability to tax the taxes to federal, uh, state, and municipal levels. But we still have to regulate the tax and create the basis, and create the, 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 the rates, and, and regulate the taxable events. So it's a new challenge. The tax reform doesn't end when the, the PACs are approved. By the way, they start when the PACs are approved, because we will have other discussions and, then, again, new negotiation in that respect. So I would say we still have a I, I'm also optimistic in that respect, but I know that the path is still far uh, from the end. Uh, and finally, but uh, 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 with respect to, to, to that, I understand it's a, a question would be, well, what about time here? Time will be an issue, of course. The government has approved the, the, the I, I'll, I'll leave back to that, but uh, just my opinion on that. Of course, time is, is an issue, and of course, the social security uh, uh, reform is gone, thank God. So the government may focus on that. But I guess the end is, uh, the end of the year is now, it's around the corner. So we don't have something for the years, that's for sure. The question will be, is it gonna happen next year? My impression is that we do have municipal elections next year. So second semester for me will be gone because people would be thinking of elections, that will be the case. So whatever happens, in my view, will have to happen in the first semester. If it doesn't happen in the first semester, and this is a very important uh, budget negotiation, then we might have to, to go for 2021. Then government will be weaker than in the first year, naturally, and if it's not uh, solved in the third year, forget about the fourth year, because then again, it's election for the for presidency. So uh, again, we can kind of have windows, uh, time windows to approve this, and we again, in parallel, we're running with the administrative tax reform, administrative reform, sorry. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge that I, uh, 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 the government will face. And uh, again, this is going to be uh, something as you to be used as a platform for the new election in, in, in three years now. 
So I don't know if it's going to be ready to be bragged about when it, the, the election is, is coming or if it's something that will be supposed to, to go to the next government. So I don't know, uh, uh, there's one thing to discuss. I would like to ask him something about, in my opinion, the, the most polemic aspects of the, the bills. Uh, flat rate of IBS and no more tax benefits in Brazil. These points are in both the first projects here. How do you see this? It, it's feasible to have a rate, uh, a flat rate, to IBS in the, the first project in PEC 45. They are suggesting something like uh, 25 percent, and it is feasible to have no more tax benefits. We know that the companies in Brazil they enjoy all, almost yeah, all of them. They enjoy exactly, and it's a very important uh, factor to the competitiveness in Brazil. How do you see this? Yeah, the flat rate is a dream. It's nice. It's important. It, it's uh, it, it's on paper. It's very good. The flat rate, but we have many different taxable events in this case. So the flat rate treating all events at a uh, 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 as one thing is, uh, in my view, it's not realistic. So if we're saying that a flat rate, for, for instance, uh, is applied to the sale of a car and the sale of, let's say, sugar, we, we, we're talking about different things. We are really talking about different products and with the different essentialities and uh, different purposes. So a flat rate, in this case, would tend to burden some taxes, some, some products, and alleviate the, 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 some others. So it, it, it's an, a, an issue. For instance, a, a flat rate in this proposal, it's even worse in, in 110, for instance, because, for instance, IOF. IOF is a tax that is not supposed to be a tax for collection. It's a tax for control. For instance, the government doesn't have the purpose of collecting. The government has the purpose of control. For instance, it's, it's like on the exchange of cash from and out of Brazil. So, uh, uh, you can't, it, so and nowadays it's just 0 0.38 because the idea is not to, to have a, a burdensome treatment, it's just to have a, 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 a toll, just to control the, the exchange. Can you imagine that you have a flat rate treating the exchange of, ra of uh, rate in Brazil, the same as like an acquisition of sugar, for instance? Let's say that you have a flat rate of 20%, then you have, you, you send money to Brazil, you apply to that taxable event, if ever that prevails, 20%. It's unreasonable. So we don't have, we cannot have just a flat rate combining different taxable events in a single tax. On paper, it's very good, but I think on, on a daily basis that wouldn't be realistic. And as for the 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 tax benefits, the Brazil lives with that, and companies are attracted to that. So that, of course, that would mess up many things because if companies they are not attracted to a given state because it's not the, the rate is flat for the, the entire country why would it stay there would i go there so it's a, it's something that should be discussed because again it's it's the difference between tax policy and tax politics so we do have a, a, a huge thing to discuss here perfect let's what matters the tax reform will happen in brazil <laughs> Fisher, please uh well thank you also and uh, ted for the invitation um yeah can happen, but I don't think we can be very optimistic about the size of this thing. Uh, first, because of the time, you know, this year is finished, it's done. I think uh, we will have to vote the budget, and uh, these guys in this year, in, in the whole project in Brazil, they just want to go on vacations and get back in February. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, I think uh, we have, uh, I would add something about the timing. We we'll have this next year, like, municipal elections in the second half of the year. This is very important <coughs> because Brasilia, the Congress basically produces nothing in this month. Uh, I think in August, September, and October. In addition, uh, in this window of opportunity, you can call it this, we'll have the end of the turn of Maya in the House as Speaker of the House. By the end of the next year, we'll have elections for the Speaker of the House and uh, the Senate on February, I think it's 1st February of 2021. So this is a real window of opportunity because we don't know who will replace Maya, but surely it will, it will not be a congressman from Novo Party or some guy like Maya in the House. So 
we have to do something in the first semester of the next year for sure. Um, I think uh, about the municipal elections and how can it damage this, this voting or these negotiations. We saw them in 2017, 17, yeah, 16, voting this spending cap bill in the middle of the municipal elections. You know, of course, Sao Paulo finished in the first round, it helped a lot. Um, but we saw that because Temer was really well coordinating with the politicians at this time. And we are not seeing the same thing in this government and we will not see. They are not these guys. They won't coordinate things like Temer used to do with the Congress. So about the pension reform you mentioned, I think yes, it's a big achievement because now we can discuss for real this tax reforms, we can discuss administrative reforms because we have a country to discuss this thing. So we exist since yesterday, virtually, um, and then we can discuss how to organize this outcome from this big country that survived this crisis or are trying to survive. We have this spending cap, we have a lot of things to discuss, golden rule. Um, well, we have this first semester of 2020. I think uh, the bill we must look at is the one in the house. Um, I like this bill in the Senate and I like Howdy very much. He was a congressman and I have a good relationship with him. But um, the view Columbi pretty much made the, a copy paste about this bill. He didn't know about anything about that. But it was a very smart, smart political movement because he saw this pension reform happening in the house. Nobody was discussing about the Senate. The Senate has no opinion about that. Now he is in the discussion into that. And they had to talk to him to make this thing, uh, I don't know, to push forward this reform. So uh, it was very smart uh, from, from uh, David. Um, we have three, basically three big parts. Of course, the governors, uh, they have a role in this, but we have this federal government, this, uh, the executive proposal. I think uh, they were ambitions like this before, but Bolsonaro basically blew this because he fired Marco Sintra. And uh, to be fair with the president, what we know, we, we knew in Brazil at this time, he never blocked, he never den denied the government to discuss this new taxation internally, but he asked them really directly to do not discuss in public because it damaged his public image. And the politicians in Congress, of course, they were waiting for Bolsonaro to pro propose or discuss that to deny, to blame Bolsonaro. He wants to create a new taxation and we are the good guys, we will deny that. So basically that Bolsonaro is a congressman, he knew that at the time. So Marco Sintra, of course, he never respected this, this, I don't know, this order from the president. He's continuing to discuss it public and the president just fired him. It happens in governments and enterprises. Um, well, I think uh, what what's going to happen for now? Um, the government will give to this issue some magnetism. I think uh, Temer gave this in this uh, bill about pension reform in the past. Um, he lost his magnetism, his importance about this bill in the year of the elections and after this leak tape and all that stuff. Paulo Guedes and the government of Bolsonaro proposed a new one a anabolized reform, and uh, they got again this magnetism. What the Congress in Brazil usually, for good things, for bad things, they, 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 they do, but what they usually don't do about uh, 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 new, new things, new good things, creativity. So the part that was very creative in this pension reform it was the capitalization system, you know? They just cut it out. They voted a good reform, you cannot blame them, but they just voted the obvious things, you know. Um, so they cannot be very creative in this tax reform because Congress will not give that. They will not deliver this reform like this. But they can vote, I think, uh, you say that, uh, simplification. We'll have a more reasonable system, you know, uh, of taxation in Brazil. We'll have that. Uh, I think Maya wants to do that. We are very close to Aguinaldo Ribeiro. He is the guy to keep an eye. He is a very well um, 
very good negotiator in Congress, you know, he is very clever, he is smart, and uh, he is really committed with this reform. He, uh, I was in Singapore, I called him because I had to talk with the clients there, and uh, he was studying with Bernard P during the recess of the Congress. I don't know, uh, congressmen were in the beaches, were in Miami, anyway. He was in Sao Paulo studying in Ainsper with Marcos Boa, he was there starting to know about what he's making a report. The normal thing in Congress is the congressman, he knows more or less what he's proposing and the guys, uh, the technical guys will write this report, he will read this report, he will make the political negotiation, this is the point, that they are experts, but he doesn't know anything about the, the, the main issue. Um, I do not know, he's trying to do this, so he has improving his technical side, he's a very skillful politician, and uh, he wants to replace my in the house as a speaker of the Royal House in 2021-2022. So it would be very bad for him if he couldn't at least deliver a good reform in the Special Commission. So he has to, it means he's a strong politician if he does that. So it's very good for him uh, to push forward this reform on that commission. Um, I think there's a good understanding, uh, we can see that in Brazil, uh, between those guys, uh, Maya, Davio Columbri, not the report, the rapporteur in the Senate. This guy, I think, when he proposed his uh, report of this reform, this free tax zone, like we have in Manaus, one in Maranhão, his home state, so he's basically making some small politics for his state, but he qualified this proposal, this report, when he did it. Um, we know in Senate they won't vote this in the floor because they won't concentrate efforts in this, not very legal, but mixed commission. They will compose a not legal, but very, I think it's important political sign, you know, um, with uh, congressmen and with senators. They will propose this commission to discuss and uh, try to get this, I don't know, this consensus point. And uh, from what why we're hearing in Congress, what are we uh, feeling, they will agree in the simplification. This is the big word on that. Um, they know this, this time thing much better than us. Um, so Maya wants this label, the guy that voted the special reform, saved the country, we saw him crying, blah, blah, uh, He wants to be the guy who voted this tax system simplification uh, and, and, well, did something important, you know? For what? We don't know. To run for president, for to run as VP of somebody, but he wants to be important because he knows, uh, it's all about politics always, right? Um, he knows that he, so his role, his position as the most, I think, uh, most strong, most important politician in the political world, in this political establishment in Brazil, is finishing by the end of the next year. So he wants a legacy to negotiate and to play an important role among the party, the political parties and the political system to be in a good position in 2022 elections. Because if not, he will be re-elected as congressman and just that. So we are positive We're with this reform i think uh, they will vote something it will be it will define some spotlights with this administrative reform organizing the state uh, i don't know Juma, uh, uh, <laughs> for us but trying to organize this brazilian state with in this side with this administrative reform for the new commerce in the public service not the, the actual ones also doesn't want to i don't know make anything with the guys uh, working as public servants in Brazil today, uh, nowadays, but um, they want to do something for the future, uh, which is a very good thing. And uh, I think the tax reform would be the next, the, the, the other leg of the government. They will not be very, very, well, fine words, but they will not be very, very ambitious on that because of Bolsonaro and Marcos Sintra and all that stuff. But uh, I believe they will propose the simplification of the federal taxes, fiscal fees, and uh, EPE, all that, that things. I don't know about EOF, because there's a discussion between the, uh, I don't know, Chief of Staff and Paul Guedes, they never agreed about what to do with this taxation. 
um, maybe it will be in the Bulgaria's uh, uh, proposal bill or negotiation with the Congress. If he never proposed a bill and negotiate with Aguinaldo and Maya and David, it would be much better, you know. Uh, a negotiation between the federal government and uh, the houses of the parliament with, in, in a proposal of the parliament. It could give this, this protagonist that the houses are loving right now. But I think they will propose a new thing and uh, because it's about ego, it's about vanity, as you said. Uh, it's always about that, right? And, um, but I, I, I think they are going the same directions with some different ideas, but they are going. Executive branch, um, in the judiciary, the Supreme Court, thoughtfully, these guys, they are discussing in some parts this, and we are feeling, we have this, we're, we monitor in Brazil the Supreme Court because um, Zena, the, when XP hired me, it was to help Zena, our chief economist, with the political side. So I'm a guy in Brazil, I will use to Congress, he used to work in Congress my whole life and uh, four years ago I moved to the market so to help Zena and uh, when this thing in Brazil with Lava Jato, Lula, all that stuff we hired Deborah who works in the Supreme Court 10 years so she knows the justices and knows everything about that uh, what happens in the courts so we hired her and she's monitoring the court constantly at TCU and the Supreme Court and the STJ constantly because they have a role and all that stuff um, government is asking to the courts, it's asking not officially, but they are asking their opinion because in Brazil everything is about going to the justice by the end of the day and try to suspend decisions or, uh, I don't know. So it's very good when you have a preliminary opinion from the justice branches in Brazil. Um, so they're talking, I think uh, they will use the this, this two months of this year trying to negotiate and get some this uh, um, consensus points and uh, after February we can see this reform advancing and uh, again Aguinaldo Ribeiro and the house proposal are the guys, uh, Maya and Aguinaldo, are the guys to keep an eye. They need the government to give some this magnetism because the house is afraid to vote this reform, this 45 back Send to the Senate, Senate will never vote this. And the Senate could do the same thing, vote this, this constitutional amendment, send to the House, the House will never vote, so no reform. The government can make the smudge of proposals, you know, so that's why they're asking where, when the government will send something, when the government will talk with us, when they were, well, it will happen now. They were very busy with the special reform, it's finished, well, now see this, this guys in Brazil, uh, moving through, give us a new taxation system. Uh, Hisha, just, uh, just a question. Uh, Aguinaldo uh, is the president of the Special Commission, which is analyzing the PEC 45. He's the rapporteur. Sorry? The rapporteur of the... Of the okay, scale. the rapporteur. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, we have a PEC 45 running in, ha in the, the House of Representatives. We have PEC 110 in the Senate. They are running, and I understood that you believe that PEC 45 is more advanced or more feasible, etc., etc. In formal terms, uh, do, do you think it's possible to have an mixed special commission to analyze both projects, 45 and 110? Yes, uh, it's perfectly feasible. Uh, that's what they're trying to do, that view Columbia, to have this protagonist because who proposes mixed commissions is the president of the Congress, which is the president of the Senate, so he will propose this for, for, for sure. Um, and uh, Aguinaldo will be the rapporteur of this. It's not very official because you have this, I don't know, this joint commissions for uh, provisional measures and uh, we don't have this to discuss <laughs> constitutional amendments. You have to commission some investigations, but not for this. But this is a thing that both houses want to make and wants protagonism and wants to vote. So he will propose and Agnaldo will be the, the guy to, I don't know, to first to get the, the many ideas we have, the many proposals we have, and try to propose one thing. In this commission, they won't vote. They can make a symbolic of voting or something like this, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is Agnaldo making this political arrangement. This is a good space to do it because if you have this, this, uh, 
th this is what happens with these provisional measures. You know, they are discussing, uh, uh, they're discussing and voting in this uh, mixed commissions with the senators and congressmen, and then floor and floor, House and Senate, and uh, well, they go to the floor, it goes to the floor with uh, more consensus, you know, and uh, we know what is not uh, in this consensus before. So if it happens with this proposal, this is a very good thing. I think it will happen. Okay. We have to vote in one house yes. and after in the other. Yes. Yes. This commission can the make Congress. a support, I think. The, the Congress doesn't exist. No, yes. Okay. You are right. But uh, there is a possibility to have a special condition to discuss, at least to discuss this. Uh, but, uh, well, I, I understood that timing is a concern. Considering the elections, municipal elections, considering any other aspect. So I really believe when I saw the project, I think that m many people probably think the same. Mm -hmm. When we saw the project, they are very similar. They have many similar points. Mm -hmm. And why don't they sit in the same table to discuss this? Because we need this in the country. Yeah, we have this social pact. <laughs> we have this concern uh, about uh, the independence of the central bank, which is a very good thing and much much easier to discuss you know it's independent or not you will discuss the size of the mandate of the board that's it so we have the Rodrigo Maia one he proposed this in 2003 I believe he was a congressman at this time just newcomer in Congress we have one in Senate discussing in this economic committee and Paul Geddes proposed one on April if you look at those three bills, they are the same thing, going to the same direction, but we have three. Yes, Anna, I'd like, uh, I'm afraid we, people today leave this room feeling, ah, I think nothing is going to happen till the end of the year, I can relax. <laughs> I'm a little afraid. Or not. <laughs> or not. I, I, my advice to you, I think something is going to happen, probably not the tax reform, as we are discussing here, but something is going to happen, and be prepared for it. In my opinion, I'd like to listen to you too, you both, but I think we would have the merger of peace, coffins, and IPI in the end of this year, the federal level. I think by they are law. going to do this. By a law by provisional measure, I think, because I doubt we are going to have time for bill. This, this, it's funny because I remember that we had a, an event at the, uh, at the office in 2013. It was 13, Five years ago. And, the, and there was a guy uh, there that, uh, that came from the tax for the revenue service and said, well, as of January the 1st of 2014, we'll have another bill replacing peace and fulfill. They will, we will unify this and then it's going to be easy, it's going to yeah. be a new tax, but the same tax with it. And it's funny because, of course, it never came out yeah. and we're still discussing this. Many rumors in the market say, well, there's a draft uh, legislation for this, but we never saw this draft legislation. So I don't know where it's going to we don't know where it is. Yes. There is. Yeah, but I believe that this is something that may happen because the drive for simplification is very important. And they need to continue showing they are moving forward with this important agenda. Another... Uh, as Sorry about this. Oh God. <laughs> I forgot. Another important point is the income tax rate that we discussed before. And on the, the same side, in, in the parallel, we have to consider the dividend taxation. And this is why I think if you have investments in Brazil with profits, accumulated profits, take attention and think about make a cash re repatriation. In the, before the end of the year because if you do this you can come back and bring this money again but I'm afraid we can have some changes by provisional measure that we do not control probably it's going to appear 31st of this December 31st so take attention 
And another aspect that maybe will require of you more analysis is related to the corporate structure. Because in Brazil it's really common we have the holding structure and we have the company. And this holding structure usually it's implemented for goodwill amortization. And, but some they, they were not merged yet. If we have the if holding tax on dividends, how it's going to happen? Because the subsidiary is going to pay dividends for the holding and we are going is, ho is the holding able to offset this withholding tax or not? This something has to be thinking. And usually it takes time. It's not easy discussion because it involves many, many people and many aspects. So I would recommend, I strongly recommend that we start to think about these aspects. And finally, uh, the simplification that has been discussed and probably it's going to happen. I was analyzing and studying this and I'm really worried about because they are creating a new income tax methodology for uh, to starting not from the accounting profit but starting creating a fiscal result with ex specific expenses and specific additions. And this sounds to me very complex and I don't think we are going, even though uh, the tax authorities are saying that the main objective is to bring the simplification, my studies, I, I cannot <laughs> meet the simplifications. Thank you for the helpful advice for the audience, but now I will open to questions. I don't know if uh, somebody just, has a question. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, as for the dividends, we have been seeing this dividends, this discussion on dividends is taking forever because every year we come up with discussion. Last year, when it came to elections, it was the talk of the town. Every single candidate had a speech on dividends. So it, it's something that it's, it's on the verge of happening. Every year is on the verge, but I guess it's more like uh, it's the, the heat is on in this case. So I understand that this is going to happen at a certain point. The discussion is when, and I guess anyone here can have an argument or a, a guess and nobody's going to be right and nobody's going to be wrong because we're, we're talking about, of course, rumors and expectations. My belief in that respect is that when the dividend taxation came out in, two, in 1996, we had a 15% rate and we had a 34% rate in the, in the corporate basis. It was high. It was high. But still, there was no, what we call it, there was no, there was no peace called fees taxation, which is revenue. Uh, taxation. It started two years later with 3.65, then in 2002 and three came the almost 10% taxation with the VAT discussion. So the clear uh, 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 direction of the government was to tax the corporate, uh, the, the company itself, rather than the, the, the beneficiary of the dividend. So as from that moment to this moment, we had a, an increasing burden of the, the corporate basis and uh, 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 decreasing the burden of the recipient. If we have to implement the dividend taxation at this point, my view is that we have to review this because then we cannot just bring, go back to the rate of 1995 and then keep the burden of the of the corporation itself. So it's which is very high again, still 34 percent plus fiscal fees at almost 10 percent. Yes, and this this has been the discussion here because. It's the more the higher you burden a, a, a company or a person, the higher is the higher is the the chance that the, the person or the company will try to get by, get rid of that. Of course, it's normal. So my impression is that they will have to go after a huge discussion. Taxation on dividends for me, it, it comes together with all all this uh, other discussion, which is again the corporate basis, the corporate taxation. So my guess is if the government brings through provisional measure, some uh, uh, dividend taxation at this point, up to the end of this year, two things will happen. It won't be happening in 2020 because it ha the provisional measure has to be approved still in 2019, which is gonna, not going to happen. So the rate is going to be increased uh, only 2021, first thing. Second thing is 
it will be a huge surprise because we will have an increase in the corporate uh, 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 the overall basis without a discussion of the, with the society. And I guess my my guess is this the, the this is the history of uh, tax authorities in Brazil. Unfortunately, this is the history of taxation uh, or tax burden. But I guess they have been learning with the uh, with the mistakes over the over the years. And I would say that it will be more responsible for them to keep a discussion with the tax uh, with the with the taxpayers before they and then they they provide a, a, a dividend taxation aligned with everything else instead of just throwing a provisional measure with an increase of tax rate. That's why, my guess, maybe I'm naive in this point, they should wait until next year at least to discuss this. And of course, as Klaus said, it's a provisional measure. So it's, you don't need a constitutional amendment, you don't need 45 votes, so it's easier to, to implement. But I hope they'll be more responsible at this point uh, rather than just increasing the rate and then uh, 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 just throwing that to the market. That's um, my view. I would like to open uh, a few questions. Uh, first here and after here. Richard has something. Isha, yeah, I think this provisional measure thing, uh, sending to the end of the year unifying, it's unlikely because the Congress will feel very unrespected by the government. If it, they want to do it, they will vote this provisional measure in the next year. They would just let it die and uh, it could make a mess more mess in the system. So uh, I think it could be interpreted by the Congress as a, a lack of respect. Another one. From the <laughs> another one. Yeah, is that true? Uh, yeah, they, they, they would never vote this. Just they like what happened they, when Hernan Carreiro returned that uh, provisional yes, measure at that time perfect. was a disaster. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one because it was about subsides. It, it was ending subsides for some sectors and uh, he just uh, just return to the government. Yes, uh, I think it could could happen again. Um, and uh, about this dividends, well, uh, things you you have to ask why things happen and why things doesn't happen in Brazil. And uh, we know and uh, we we've read some stories about many people in Congress being partners or not very legal partners, but getting money on dividends in companies. So I think uh, things happen for some reasons and doesn't happen in Brazil for many reasons. So I'm not very confident with this one. We used to hear that uh, since many years ago and uh, every, you know, we're going to do that. All we is in love with this idea. Uh, Meredith in the past was in love with this idea. In Congress, we don't see people so in love with the idea. And they have to think that dividend taxation in Brazil have all the structures. Dividend taxation has been something very easy to claim because it's dividends. So people say, well, rich people get that and for free. But we have to think that in Brazil, well, not in Brazil, but anywhere, but in Brazil, people, all types of companies, they receive dividends free of taxation. And all types of companies, doesn't it doesn't mean multinationals only. We're talking about any grocery store, a store in Brazil, it's a company anyway. So the person who is the owner, who is behind the balcony is the owner, and it, the person also receives that uh, tax-free. So there is a myth that uh, there is a, a, a rich people, they get, uh, they get dividends for free, but again, Multinationals are exceptions. That's it. exceptions. If you think of all the companies in Brazil, because most companies in Brazil are middle size and, and, and smaller size, so they all benefit from that. So it's a again. That's why I think it's a huge thing to tax dividends because the discussion has to be much deeper than just throwing a rate to the market. I'm trying to open to the questions. <laughs> Sorry. Our speakers are Sorry. very very good. The first one is there, here, and here. Please. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I remember working in Brazil and, uh, you know, the company, uh, uh, I remember uh, working in Brazil and, um, I'm not Brazilian, by the way, I think it's pretty obvious I'm a great guy. But, um, I remember working there and having to help the company that I worked with pay taxes and it was on a monthly basis. And that was just for a startup. So I would imagine for a large company that would be you know, many multiples of problems. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding something that you said. Um, are you saying that you believe that the number of taxes will be simplified, but the payment infrastructure itself will remain the same? 
that's my first question. And then just is another like quick kind of bonus question. Do any of those bills address um, some of the more, let's say, what I personally would think like ridiculous taxation things? Like if I'm correct, I think you pay taxes on uh, charitable donations in Brazil. Is, is, is that correct? Which is a clear disincentive to people, you know, kind of trying to find goodness in their hearts. Yeah, they don't know shit. In one of the, 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 the taxes, they clearly talk about donations, but they have a different view on that. So they don't they don't bring donations, for instance, to these taxes, the VAT tax. They focus more on like on, on, on consumption. But the problem is that if they bring all types of taxable events to that, and that doesn't necessarily mean consumption, you're bringing apples and oranges to the same basket, which is something that shouldn't be reasonable. They should think of the same uh, similar taxable events and issue tax uh, with the same tax. So uh, they, don't, they don't go as far as donations, but they think of many things uh, that don't combine by themselves. And uh, as for your first question as to the, the idea is to make it simple to, for people to collect the tax, and I see that the taxpayer will be very, uh, will find itself in a very simple situation to collect the tax, meaning compliance and, and just drafting the, the, the stuff to collect. But I guess all the movement of cash and distribution will be inside the doors with the government to distribute to the, to the states and cities. So I guess this I, is going to be I a just, whole complex thing. I, would, I just would like to add that the transitional period in the bills, as mentioned by Ms. Felipe, continues to keep the SPED and these new taxes. So this is completely uh, something that for sure will increase the bureaucracy and the, the time. At least for 10 years. And the costs for administ tax administration. So this is something that is worrying everybody. Please, here. Uh, I would assume that, right here. <laughs> I would assume that in addition to simplification, the goal of any tax reform would be to reduce the tax burden. Does the social security reform approval create more space for tax cuts in the future? What's our more space for tax? The social security uh, reform approval, does that create more space for tax cuts in the future? I don't think so. The idea of the tax and social security reform is to alleviate the burden of the government itself. So I'd say I don't see that with re relation to that to that uh, to to that reform to this one that we're talking about. The idea of this one is openly said by the government that it's neutral. It should be neutral. It shouldn't be an idea to create taxes, a new burden. But of course, it will. Of course, uh, and it might be uh, it might alleviate some cases, but it will create burden in other cases. So the idea, even though it should be neutral, I understand that it's uh, a tax reform is never neutral. So it's wow. just simplification. That's the idea, which is a huge thing, by the way. But still, but we never know. We will see in the future. Yeah, I think that nobody nobody has these numbers. Yeah, but it's still less about this tax reform and much more about the fiscal situation, no? If we don't vote this in Brazil, this golden rule and uh, I don't know between f uh, the, the, this constitutional amendment, it's all about constitution in Brazil, uh, to, to, I don't know, to enforce the golden rule and uh, the, the, the spending cap, the fiscal situation in Brazil will explode, the budget will explode in 2021, so you cannot abdicate any real in taxation if you have this fiscal situation. It's much more about that than taxation. Here, a question. Hi, um, I'd like to go back to the, to the first question about um, when we, our colleague here mentioned about uh, the tax, not only the tax burden, but also on a monthly basis, the collection process, okay? Uh, in my experience, I was CEO of a mid-sized company in Brazil for four years, and the, the main tax burden on top of everything else that you guys have discussed brilliantly is a cash flow burden. Because in most cases, for most Brazilian businesses, the government sees the money before the business sees it. <laughs> so you bill a customer, you get the money in your bank account in 60 days, but the government will see the money on the, on the 20th of every month, regardless of whether the customer pays you or not. And God forbid you try to cancel an invoice because all of a sudden the, the, the customer, oh, I don't want this anymore. 
it happens a lot. So I've seen, but that's not the first time I see this kind of discussion before, but I, I never hear anything about this cash flow burden. It's getting better now, but Brazil is a very, um, money costs a lot. So again, in my experience, the cash flow burden, the cost of money, the impact of working capital needs for Brazilian businesses, is it being addressed at all in these discussions, or is it just something that will, will, will be next, you know, something for the next 10 years? I'd like to hear you guys about that. Uh, I, I would like to, I've seen two discussions. First of all, the NOL uh, offsetting. Because, as you know, in Brazil, you have a limit of 30% of the yep. profit. They are discussing to have the taxation quarterly. So, uh, instead of annually, quarterly, and you are going to be able to offset 100% of the, the NRL. Uh, what are the yeah, this is one of the discussions. Another that address the cash that you are mentioned is how, because the big issue in my point of view is also the companies, they have credits against the, the government and they don't have money to pay. So this really impacts the, your cash flow. Yeah, yeah. So they are also discussing how to do this, but I haven't seen any convinced answers about in the bills about this. Here. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation and congratulations on keeping it like very informative and concise. This you can go into a lot of detail. Um, but quick question, clearly there are three pegs. There will have to be some unification at some point. So your best guess or what are like the, 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 the least common denominator of top three measures that we would see uh, out, out of this sometime if, we are, if it happens or in the mid first half of next year, for example? I will try to, to sum up and then you help me. But I believe the IBS is going to happen. Attention. It's a unification. And your attention, please. This is the building's fire life safety director. It's okay. He advised that a test of the building's fire system is now being conducted. Okay, it's okay. So I'm glad. <laughs> Mr. Guard, all tones, trolls, okay. Uh, we are going to see uh, the taxes, the federal ones for sure they are going to merge and they are going to negotiate to merge the state tax, the ISMS and the ISS. I think this is the main drive that we, we are going to see. Probably. It's, uh, they are calling the dual IBS. Probably because it's hard to have just one rate and uh, to let the, the states and municipalities without any power. Probably this is one of the discussions. It's my question. Yeah, it, it's yours too. Oh, I'm glad. We haven't discussed it. And the second. That's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> the second, I, I would say we are going to see changes in relation to income tax rate. Dividends. Another point: interest, interest on net income. They are discussing to change to, and the methodology of income tax. One more question here. No, sorry. 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 No, I agree. I understand that Pack 45 is the one that is more advanced in the discussion, so it kind of should, could prevail at this point, if I have to guess. But it's a federal tax. It is one single tax. I would say that. That's why when I presented 128, I said it was more feasible because that's a dual tax. Maybe they could combine them and bring to back 45 this dual uh, idea because the states are very strong in that uh, uh, resistance to allow uh, the idea of being dependent upon the government. At least at this point. I don't know what happens in five or ten years, but at this point they are there. Could be a transition, all right? Yes, that's the idea of the government. Yeah. They say, well, let's let's do what we can do at this point, do a tax, and then in the future we can combine them. That's what the government itself has been saying, not the Congress. Mm -hmm. But maybe in the, in the future they'll, they'll get together. Just to come back to the just, just to come back to the just simplification point. But one of the most 
difficult conversations in my professional career was explaining to the CEO of a U.S. multinational how we were losing money in Brazil but still paying taxes. <laughs> so I, 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 think, I think simplification would be a good idea. But how much of this hangs on that concept? I mean, there's a lot of moving parts here. That a lot of pieces are controversial, the dividends, etc. cetera. Um, suppose we can't get to neutrality, then what happens to the whole process? Uh. Uh, the only thing I can answer at this point is just we won't get neutrality. I don't think we will. The profile of the, 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 the amendments here, the, the, the proposals, they don't reach neutrality, and I don't see, I don't think that they match the, 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 the speech of the government on neutrality. When they say neutrality, for me, is I, I read that like calm down, don't worry about that because we have to to move forward. But I don't see neutrality, so I don't I don't know how we can get to it. A speech of neutrality to I don't know to our investors or something like this. What I would do is an increase. In some activities, there will be an increase. It's too at this point. It's very, very, very early to understand what is going to increase or not because again we're talking about amendments to the constitution and the amendments they will go as far as attributing a new tax to the federal government and saying that the cash will be uh, distributed or something like that. But it won't go as far as, uh, you, go, you won't go so far as bringing the tax basis, you won't go so far as bringing the tax rate, so it's really early. That would be provided by ordinary legislation that would regulate the, 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 the Constitution. So, again, we can keep the concepts in mind, but at this point we cannot predict. If I had a company, for instance, I wouldn't really worry about all the other uh, uh, segments. I would focus on my say, well, let's, uh, let's see what is going to increase or decrease for me at least, because it, uh, it, it's really hard to understand what is going to happen in the market overall. I think we have uh, time for one more question. No? Yeah. Well, I would suggest you, we all to bet on the 45. Back for that's the one who has conditions to be proved. Yes, well, that's my horse. <laughs> and you can, also, you can also add some amendments and some points okay, to, to increase the quality mm -hmm. of PEC 45. But it is, it will be PEC 45. And I think, you know, government is, knows it because uh, uh, government's proposal was put down by the Marcos Sintra ideas and this Marcos Sintra and so on. And that will be done. But it will be uh, approved along 2020 to be put uh, at, at the best to be put in action in 2021. Sorry, but from here to the end of the year, nothing will happen in this subject. So, oh, I'm one, glad. One thing. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't mention you know, the, the municipal IT, IPPU. Right. Okay. Because in, in some municipalities, it's a very important. Yes, IPTU and, uh, and the ISS have their biggest collections for them. Just to clarify, uh, I, be, I what I want is just to to give the message to be prepared. I think. Uh, it's time to review internally and see the impact. And I'm really glad that we do not have anything until the end of the year. I will celebrate with you. <laughs> the atmosphere is favorable to reforms in general. Okay. But it's not easy. It's complicated. And just to mention, ICMS is larger itself from the, all the federal taxations combined. ICMS alone. And the SMS depends on 27 states. states. Definitely. It's a tax reform won't happen this year. Definitely. I'm afraid it's in changes that doesn't come through reforms. This is what I'm afraid. Let me just ask, uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a quick question. You all understand a lot about uh, taxation and about business. So if I understand this right, considering also the transition period, uh, from a business perspective, uh, there will be an increase in complexity in taxation in Brazil over the next five to ten years. Is that your bet? 
Yeah. That's true because if they, they keep the, the transitional periods, we have still have 10 years of the same taxes, reducing the rates, but still tax existing, and one extra tax, which is federal VAT. So that's why we say increase, because we only alleviate the existing ones, but we still create another one. So at least for 10 years, and let's say that in the 11th year, we might not have these taxes any longer, then that will be more, it, it, it will be of course simple. But in 10 years, we'll still have complicated things. Maybe when they start to discuss the bills and have just one, they could address this. Yes. But as it is, you are right. But probably in the future, they could address because this is completely uh, against of the government agenda. Well, I think I, I need to finish. Uh, well, thank you very much for the speakers. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for the audience. I think that we need to leave the room optimistic, is my advice. I really believe that we will have changes. I hope that the changes, changes will be better. And uh, we can have a second edition of our yeah. panel next, <laughs> next year. year. October next okay, year. Okay, to update everything. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you.